Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, this is uh, Bite Me Back with a uh, couple of uh, cool little things I wanted to show you guys um, for a tool that I'm working on. I'm not going to go into the details of the actual tool that I'm working on, but there's a portion of the tool that I needed to function that in the language that I'm writing the tool in, it didn't necessarily support it. Um, so I had to augment it and um, utilize um, an additional language or, an, yeah, an additional language of the application and that language is Python. Um, I'm writing my, my, my application in a different um, programming language, but particularly the module that I used a lot in Python is the Cisco Comp Parse module. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Dave Michael Pennington, um, as I believe he's the one who put this package, this package together. Um, and essentially what it does is it allows you to um, do some comp parsing, some parsing of configuration files mainly Cisco based stuff, but you can do whatever configuration file you want if you set the parameters correctly when you create the comp parse object. But it was made to be able to parse configuration files for um, um, Cisco configs. Um, so in this particular case, in the language that I'm writing in, um, they didn't really have support for a module like this. I mean, there's different guys, there's different packages that came out. Um, that kind of get after something like this, but what David put together, I mean, it, it's pretty much a finished product. So I didn't want to right now have to rewrite all that stuff into this new language. So I decided to go ahead and um, make a API, a REST API version of what David created. Um, so I got it functioning now, it's pretty cool. So essentially, if you're not familiar with the REST construct, but it just allows you to do web calls to APIs or application interfaces and get results back in JSON format. In my particular case, I'm using JSON. Um, but it's really flexible, it's really cool, and I just wanted to show you guys um, what I've been working on on it and what I've gotten so far. Essentially, I'll make this public once I get the um, basis of it completed. All the functions that I usually use out of the Comparse module translated into the REST API. Um, but I think it would be really beneficial for anybody who would want to deploy this in their uh, network or their environment um, and not have to worry about going in and coding the actual um, Python code to get after going the parsing. I'm not going to go into the source code, particularly for this demonstration, but what I will do is I'll go ahead and do a demonstration of me using the API um, to let you guys know that, show that you guys, show you guys that it is working. Um, once again, I just want to give a big shout out to David Michael Pennington because he did a lot of the, he did all of the hard work as far as the Cisco Comp Parse package itself. I'm just utilizing that package and making it REST accessible. So, go into the demonstration here. So I'm using PyCharm. And we can go ahead and um, look at some, well, we'll go ahead and look at the functions. So I got two functions here, or three functions here. Um, I got a function to do a fine line. I have a function to do a fine lines. Um, and then I have a function that does a uh, fine parent with children. And these are all accessing the REST API that's sitting on another server in my network. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into this, the, the source code of how I actually got this working, but I'm just going to show you guys a demonstration. Now, if I look at the first function, I'll go into the source code of this stuff to show you guys what's actually happening here. So essentially what ends up happening with REST calls, um, depending on what the method that you're using, and particularly I'm going to be using post methods to actually interact with my um, comp parse object or my comp parse module. But I'll walk you guys through what this is doing. So this request, get request here is actually talking to the back end of this application, this couch DB. So I'm actually going in and pulling the node ID um, out of the actual node um, and then loading that node's um, HTTP body contents into a JSON format in which I have this JSON string here. Um, in order to store it, which is something that I'm learning, I just learned in this whole DevOps world that I'm diving into, is uh, you can't store multi-line strings in, in JSON objects. So the way that I got a, uh, around that is I actually was able to store the configuration data as a base64 encoding. And so I essentially have to decode that data. But in this particular case, I'm not actually going to do that. In the REST API, what I did is I, I I triggered the REST API to receive the configuration data as base64 um, uh, content. 
Um, and then once that content is uh, uh, received by the REST API, it'll go ahead and do the necessary decodings to get the actual text data of what um, is actually stored in the database. So to simulate how the, the actual REST call would get the information, I would be passing this JSON or this Python data structure here, which is essentially going to become a JSON object, to the REST API. It's going to have these four parameters, config, the line spec, which is the actual um, search pattern or regex pattern that I'm going to use to search the configuration, um, what the comment character is, and then the syntax. Um, and this, so this, I only programmed this so I can get more flexibility um, when accessing the API because um, David did pull in uh, iOS, um, NXOS, and I believe ASA as a, as a possible syntax that you can actually trigger within the uh, comp parse module. But in this particular case, because I'm, I'm mimicking, I'm actually using my the switch that powers my house um, configuration um, as a test. So a lot of this is all default for the most part. Um, and then this line here is the request post request. So because it's a post request, you can't send data when you're doing a get request. You can only request data. So in the API that I created, um, I'm using Flask in the back end for it, but on the Flask API that I created, um, I made it a post module, and then I'm sending the JSON data, which is essentially the Python dictionary, to this URL or this resource um, that I created for uh, this particular function. Um, and then it'll return the result of whatever gets back from the post. Um, and then I also did the same thing with fine lines. Fine lines is essentially accessing another resource but opposed to doing a single inspection, I'm able to pass multiple regex commands and then get multiple results back. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much identical. This is really the only thing that's different as far as me sending that data to the function. The function itself is actually doing some additional stuff, but the request itself or the post request itself is actually going to be pretty much the same minus the uh, additional line spec um, entries into the, as opposed to being a single string, it's a list of strings. And then I have my find parents with child. And so this is essentially doing the same thing at the top here. The only difference is, is that on the find parents with child, I'm pulling back all interfaces that has a description set. Um, you know, yeah, it has the description set and then pretty much it's all the same thing and I'm returning the results. And down here is where I'm actually initiating and running that data. So if I go ahead and Go down to, let's go ahead and run this. As you can see, the results came back. And what I did is in the first one, let's go ahead and go up to the first function that I defined. So I told it I wanted to find the host name. And what it did is it, on the results, um, for the REST API, the way I programmed it is that it gives me the results, the text results of what I actually um, asked for. And then it also gives me the count of the results. So if it, depending on how many results that I should have gotten back, I should actually have one for this one. Um, on the find lines, I did the same thing, and I'm passing multiple. Um, I'm finding the host name and the version number. And so these are two separate um, lists, and so that's why you're seeing two here. I got two results back. I got version 12.2 and then my actual host name of my device. And then all the interfaces at the bottom here for find parents with child, all the interfaces that have a description, I have that returning back. And that's giving me all the interfaces that I have configured in my network now. Um, so like I said, um, it's, it's pretty uh, straightforward as far as the API itself. I will make this accessible to the public once I'm done getting the bases and getting all the security built into it. Um, I decided to go this route uh, mainly for the fact that um, you could pass parameters into the URL when you're calling the REST API, but that to me is insecure. So if I'm running HTTPS, um, all the data that's in the body of the request should be encrypted. So that means anybody intercepting the traffic should not be able to get that data unless they have the, uh, the uh, private key of the server. Um, so it, it just makes it a little bit more uh, secure by doing it this, this route. But then also, I can create the data models and then pass these. As long as you're passing this data structure into the API and the API has all the necessary information, it'll be able to return back. So like I said, it takes away from having to do all the uh, configuration, do all the uh, Python configuration itself, uh, having to do the, um, the particular coding. 
to get the results back. Um, all that's done in the API itself. All you're doing is passing and passing these fields in, and then the API gets back information, as you can see down here. Um, so if you guys enjoyed it, let me know. Um, let me know if you have a really interest of me actually making it public. Right now, it is a public, a private repo um, at request. I, I will let you guys access it if you like. Um, if you want to help build on it, or if you want to add some extra features to it. Um, in this particular case, like I said, this is mainly for an internal component of an application that I'm working on now. But, um, who, needless to say, this component can be used as a standalone and be able to be used. Um, well, when I say a standalone, um, yeah, it can be used as a standalone because if you're passing the config data into it, like I said, the way that I configured it is I'm doing it base64 um, configuration data because in JSON you cannot store multi-line objects. Um, so it's pretty much configured to be a standalone if you need it to be. So like I said, if you're interested, let me know. I do not mind sharing that information. And uh, thank you guys for your time.